for each of these animatronic eye mechanism videos that I've released recently, I've needed to use a joystick, a button and a potentiometer in order to control the eye. So what I decided was that I wanted a really easy way to do all these three things at once and ideally I should only need to do it with one hand. So I had a look at some different gaming controllers but one thing that controllers don't generally have is a potentiometer where you can adjust a value and then let go of that button and it'll stay there um, as you could with with like a volume dial or something like that. I'm going to show you how to build my solution in this video but before I do I just really quickly want to talk about my Patreon which I've started recently. On there I post about the videos that I'm working on at the time which is usually well ahead of when my YouTube videos come out. So for example at the minute I've just finished my beating heart mechanism and as I was developing that project I kept a log on my Patreon page of all the development process. Any of the different tiers can see my update feed, but there's also some other cool stuff like a sticker pack that I have. So if you are interested in that, it would be really helpful for me if you wanted to check that out. Just help me to keep these projects free and coming out regularly. So what I did was designed my own controller. It was specifically designed for my eye mechanisms, but of course, there's no reason why you couldn't use it on any sort of microcontroller project. Um, it consists of a joystick, a button on the top, which is used for blinking, and a potentiometer on the bottom, which is used to control how open or closed the eyes are. I went through a couple of different designs, but I eventually came to something a little bit um, more refined. Um, and I even think there's still a lot of room for improvement in this project, so this is something that I might come back to at a later date. But for now, I just wanted to share this design with you. Um, it's really easy to make. You don't need a particularly good quality 3D printing. Um, you need a couple of really easy to acquire components and a, maybe a tiny little bit of soldering experience. I also have the option for you to use a more expensive joystick because one thing that I was finding is that the cheap joystick I got originally, which is um, which is not even branded but um, I see it all the time if you look on Amazon for Arduino starter kits, there's always this same joystick in there so that's the one that I designed, I based the design around, um, but what I was finding is that there was a massive dead zone in the centre of the joystick and also around the edges. So I also purchased a more expensive joystick which is much much better to control the eye mechanisms with and this controller design can actually accept either type of joystick so it really doesn't have to cost you very much money at all. The only other things that you'll need are a potentiometer of about 10 kilo ohms, a couple of M3 screws um, and you might need some M2 screws if you're going to use the more expensive joystick just because the mounting holes are a little bit smaller. I recommend that you use some 6 core wire um, with an outer diameter of around 4.5 millimeters and a cable grommet for this wire and a 6.5 millimeter hole. Um, I've got some links to the exact ones that I use but there's really no reason that you have to stick to those exact specifications. Um, you could use any wire and maybe drill the hole bigger or make just minor adjustments to whatever you have lying around. I had an original design that actually just used um, jumper cables plugged straight into the controller and you know unsurprisingly it wasn't very reliable but that's always an option if you just want to make this real quick just for the experience. Starting with the printing, um, as I mentioned the printing is really easy, there's just four main components to print. The layer height really doesn't matter, uh, I used a layer height of about 0.2mm but I had a prototype that was 03 and there were no, no issues at all. Um, I printed everything flat face down and I used supports only for overhangs less than 10 degrees just because I don't like pulling support material out I prefer to print things without supports. Obviously I don't know what kind of different 3D printers uh, you guys have but but I know that for me specifically I can get away with not very much support material because I've got a really big cooling fan. There's almost no post processing to do um, I mean if you really wanted to you could go and sand the entire thing which might make it look quite nice and smooth but I can't imagine there's any point in really doing that it feels really nice without any sort of sanding it's got a nice tactile feel about it as with the previous projects I've got a guide to the holes in the design maybe if you if your printers printed them a little bit undersized you might need to just drill out some of these holes um, so you can refer to the guide to know exactly what size all of the holes need to be 
The only part that I could imagine you could have some problems with would be the hole on the very top, the large hole that the joystick pokes through, um, because if it's a little bit off, it might actually obstruct the joystick. So that's something that you can just you can do a quick test assembly and just make sure it moves okay, and then if not, just use a, a little a little knife or some sandpaper and just neaten it up a little bit. So then the tricky part really of this project is the wiring and the soldering. Uh, I've got a wiring diagram that you can use. It is going to be quite tricky to assemble and wire it all because it's in a really sort of tight, small area. The first thing you want to do is put the potentiometer block onto the shaft and get that and the button and the cable grommet if you're using that. Get them all together and connected by screwing the left and right bases together. I don't recommend that you screw the joystick into the top body yet either. Um, best thing to do is to wire it all up at this stage and then screw the top on at the very end. So my tips for soldering would be to, well first of all push it through the grommet um, and strip yourself some wires to be able to use. I think the best thing to do is to start by wiring up the potentiometer and leave some extra on your cables so that you can use the positive and negative to reach to the button and then you've now got two sort of hubs that you can connect all the wires to. So wire up and solder the potentiometer and the button first. Make sure you use uh, heat shrink tubing to isolate the joints and then the tricky part is going to be soldering the joystick to these two things without making too much excess wires that it could obstruct the inner workings. I suspect if you're using the cheaper joystick uh, it'll probably be a lot easier to solder because all of the connections come out right at the back. Um, if you're using the parallax joystick, which I recommend you do because it, it's better, um, just notice that you need to power both of the sensors individually. Um, so notice that there's a L slash R plus and a U slash D plus and those, that's the power for the left to right and the up and down connection. But you only need to wire one of the ground connections. Also, if you're using a joystick that has a switch built into it, you can wire that up in place of the separate button, and then you could maybe use that switch for something else. But I find that if you're using this controller for animatronic eyes, which is what I designed it for, it's, it's quite tricky to sort of maintain a realistic eye motion if you have to press in the joystick. And it's easier to just have that on a completely separate button. Makes it much easier to control. And then you can just seal the top on. So once it's all wired up, you can cannibalize some jumper cables so you've got something to connect to the Arduino with. Um, there's some code that you can use to test it. And you can use the serial plotter in Arduino to make sure that all the signals are how you'd expect. The joystick is able to move through its full range of motion whereas the potentiometer only has quite a small range of motion but, but my code accounts for that. Yeah, so, so it should be working fine at this stage. If you've got any problems you can always read my instructable if you want to read through some more sort of thorough text instructions and if you're looking for a project to use this controller with um, you can have a look at some of my eye mechanism videos there's a few different designs for uh, different sort of skill levels so go and check those out if you're interested um, the next video that I'm going to be doing will be my machined eye mechanism which is quite a lot different to my other two 3d printed mechanisms so check that out if you might be interested in that as always a massive thank you to my patrons and they are Aaron Hurley Eric Farrow, William Winstead, Sid Taylor, Mike Porter, Michael Shepard, David Churchman, Michael, Daryl Barney, Jeffrey Warren Park, Simon Hershey, Greg Tarlin, Rick Gordon, Pepe Hamanyemi, Werner Schultz, Paul Lopes, Ian James, Ernst Daru Stratemans, Make a Project Lab, Segi, Jason Souza, Jason Moore, Christopher LaRoche, Fit Snips and Aaron Nance. Subscribe if you like all this kind of stuff and I hope to see you in the next video.